So do you guys want to know what absolutely sucks right now? It's the fact that most Americans just can't afford a home. A lot of the time it's first time home buyers, right? But I could tell you something that sucks even more. It's when you buy a home, a lot of first time home buyers, they buy their home and then they realize, oh my goodness, I'm now house poor. This is worse than not being able to buy a home in the first place, at least in my opinion. So guys, let's get into this. I bought a house when I was 26 and fell immediately into poverty. Okay, when I lived with my parents, I was living my best luxury lifestyle. I went to South Korea, bought a 2000 plane ticket, didn't even blink twice. I went shopping, luxury goods, all that. Was traveling, was just, oh, I was living it up. I felt rich. I had no bills. And I had a full-time nine to five job. I was working as a nurse, okay? I was killing it. I bought my own house. That first mortgage payment came in and I was like, oh, this is a situation. But at first you think you can handle it, right? Like, you know, what's, what's a couple thou? was a couple thou. I got it. But then the pipes in my 80 year old home broke immediately as soon as I bought the house. Wiped out my savings. Then another pipe in a different area of the house broke. Okay, that's, I'm struggling. Okay, I need help. Then my neighbor's pipe, it was a twin house, her pipe broke. And she didn't believe that her pipe broke, but her pipe broke on my side of the house. So all of that water that was coming down was spraying into my home. And then my water heater broke. When I tell y'all, I went from living in the lap of luxury to destitute immediately. Now don't get me to fooling y'all because it was worth it in the long run because that house is now worth like two times what it was worth then. So I'm actually doing pretty good. But at the time, when I tell you I was struggling, I had to go to my parents every other day for dinner because whew, your girl could not feed herself. Hey, that's the reality, right? You know, with with real estate, things can go wrong. And if you think something can't go wrong, that's exactly when it does go wrong. And everything has an expiration date in your house, right? The water heater, the AC, the this, the that, the this, right? Whatever it may be. So if you get into a property like she did, right? At 26 years old, which is a young age, statistically speaking. And let's say you're not necessarily ready for it when you get into a property. This could completely screw you financially if you don't have money in the bank set aside for an emergency if your you know monthly income coming in is not that much needed you know it's not as much as you should be making to afford the house if you're you know if you don't have your uh gooses in order or whatever the heck that saying is you guys know what i'm saying you're going to be in trouble. But hey, I guess it did work out now that she said the property doubled in value. So hey, I guess uh, if you get through that initial hump long term, if you picked a good property in a good area, you're going to be fine. But initially there, you know, there's there's a bunch of hurdles to be jumped. People are buying houses they cannot afford in 2023. New data from Fannie Mae shows that the debt to income ratio for home buyers in America has surged up to nearly 40% today. That's even higher than it was the peak of the 06, 07 bubble because the home prices in America, they are still near all time highs. They've only gone down by a couple percent while the mortgage rates have surged way faster than people's incomes. And what concerns me is that the buyers buying in today's market, they're becoming house poor. They are having to cut back on their spending in other areas to be able to afford their house, which is a big increase in the risk of default. So if the unemployment rate goes up over the next year, we're gonna see a lot of these house poor homeowners struggle to make their payments and potentially go into default and increase the risk of foreclosure, which a lot of people think there's not gonna be foreclosures in this housing downturn. But if the debt to income ratio is higher today than it was in 05, 06, 07, at the peak of that last bubble, then yeah, there will be foreclosures this time around. So watch out so long as the U.S. government doesn't try to ban them once again. So yeah, guys, that is a big problem right now. The fact that a lot of people, A, are house poor, we're talking about that in this video, but B, the fact that inflation has gone up in all of these other categories, all of them pretty much, right? So now, not only are housing payments a huge chunk of your income coming in every month, 30, 40 percent, sometimes more, but also your other expenses like insurance, food, groceries, this, that, whatever it may be, all of those are going up as well. So this leads 
to a higher chance of default. Like he was saying, especially if people start losing their jobs, because most people out there, guys, unless they got their mortgage pre 2020, 2019, a lot of them are pinched to make that mortgage and they're one job loss away from not being able to make the payment. That is it's scary. Let's be honest. Many millennials regret buying homes. This is why it's important for you to run your numbers so that you don't end up house poor. Let me show you what I mean. What you can qualify for and what you can comfortably afford is sometimes two different things. So if you make $100,000, the typical debt to income ratio a lender is going to use when qualifying you is about 40%. That gives you $40,000 divided by 12 months gives you a monthly allowance of $3,333 if you have no debt. So you could buy probably around a $400,000 house, your payment would be around 3,300 and you would just qualify and you'd be celebrating. But the next step you must take with your family is what is your take home pay? If you make $100,000, your take home pay is around what? 6,200? If your house payment without utilities or anything is 3,300, that is 53% of your net pay. This is where you're creeping into the house poor area and you don't want to be there. But I understand your frustration because you're like, hey, I make a hundred grand. How can I find anything for under 400,000? Because back in the day, the financially responsible thing to do was to have your house payment be about 30% of your net. But if that were true for someone making 100K today, they would have to buy a $240,000 home which doesn't really exist in most places. So I understand your frustration, but when you sit down with your lender, also sit down with your family, talk with your lender and look at your net pay so that you don't end up house poor and you can actually enjoy the home you're purchasing. Yeah, a lot of people's dreams in America, you know, it, it's to be able to buy a home for themselves, you know, for your family, right? And it, it turns into a nightmare very quickly, man, if you're not able to actually afford the home. It's one thing to qualify, but it's another thing to actually afford it. Sure, if you make 100000 bucks a year, above average salary in the United States, you can qualify for a four hundred, four hundred fifty thousand dollars $450,000 house. All right. Uh, but if that payment is 53% of your income, like we just saw in that example, most likely, guys, that's too much house. You can't afford it. The, the rule is 30%. You're at 53%. Something's got to give, right? A lot of people think that if you can afford a house that's X number of dollars, you're good to go. What most people don't realize is the upkeep and the total cost to own is what kills you on real estate. Let's say that you can afford a $300,000 house. You need to keep in mind, you still got to have gas, electric, water. You've got to keep up the yard. You've also got capital improvements and you can be assured that you're probably going to spend somewhere between one and 5% per year on capital improvements. So if you're in a $300,000 house, you need to have between three and $15,000 a year that you're going to spend on capital improvements, HVAC, roof, plumbing. And the thing about it is, is if you don't calculate that in your budget, you become house poor. Nobody wants to be house poor because your house gets run down. The value of it starts to depreciate if you're not investing in your house. So don't think that the purchase price. Bingo. There you go, guys. It's not only the purchase price of the house that you have to worry about. It's all of the other stuff, electric, water, the upkeep, you know, the maintenance, the roof, right? You know, the, <laughs> the plumbing, everything, everything, man. You have to invest in your house. There's a lot of upkeep. So if you're only focused on the monthly payment for your mortgage for the house itself, you're disregarding all of the other important uh, budget line items, if you will, that you have to keep in mind when you're buying a house. And that's how a lot of people, she said it better than I, than I can say it, that's how a lot of people become house poor. It's sad, but it's true. Dude, I barely have any money after my mortgage payment this month. I want to go out with my friends tonight, but I just can't. Hey man, you are not alone. 69% of homeowners feel house poor too. Wait, I'm confused. What's house poor? House poor means that after your mortgage expenses and maintenance costs associated with your house, you have no money left for you to enjoy. You can say that again. As a first time home buyer, the little things really start to add up. I understand. When we invest into real estate, sometimes we only look at the equity that we'll be making over a period of time. 
We don't always account the cost of big repairs or maintenance when it comes to home ownership. That's why you can use resources like consumeraffairs.com so you can research and learn more before making big purchases. Click the link in our bio. So that might have been an ad either way. Not affiliated with this channel here, guys. But he's right. You know, you won't be able to go out and have fun with your friends and do all these extracurricular activities if you're house poor. And he said 69% of homeowners feel house poor right now. A lot of them being first time home buyers. So again, like I said earlier in the video, guys, the American dream is to buy a home, white picket fence, have the beautiful, you know, lawn, a couple cars in the yard. Uh, but cars, we'll save that for another video, guys. But a lot of the time, buying a house, it could be a trap if you're not ready for it financially and you don't have an emergency fund and money put aside for the house itself, right? If I have one piece of advice for first time primary home buyers, it's this. Do not overextend yourself. And what I mean by do not overextend yourself, listen up very carefully because the bank will tell you otherwise. Your realtor will tell you otherwise. They will say, Mr. Mrs. Primary Home Buyer, it's your first time buying a home. Here's what the bank will lend to you. The bank says you qualify for a million dollars due to the quality of your W-2 income and your rate of low debt. For that reason, I will approve you for $1 million to buy a home. And the realtor will say, absolutely, let's look at million dollar homes. And before you know it, you've put an offer out on a $900,000, $1 million home. And lo and behold, you're house poor. House poor means that all of your money is now basically tied up into the place that you poop in and rest at night. Like that that now becomes your biggest financial liability. Bingo. I love that. She said now it becomes your biggest financial liability. The L word. You guys know that word liability? A lot of people think that their primary residence, the, the house they buy, is an asset. Is it an asset or is it a liability? Well, let me ask you guys this. Does the house put money in your pocket or is it taking money out of your pocket? Well, it's taking money out of your pocket, which means it's not an asset. It's a liability. Sure, the equity goes up over time, but well, all the maintenance, all the costs. You know, I read a I read an article one time about a study that was talking about how with all of the costs and all of the, you know, the, the breakdown over 30 years, a lot of the time people just break even on uh, their primary home. It's almost like a forced savings account rather than an investment. Uh, but yeah, just ask yourself, is it putting money in your pocket or is it taking money out of your pocket, right? If you were renting out the house, with tenants and they're putting money in your pocket, it's an asset, right? But if you're living there, it's your primary residence, it's not an asset, it's a liability. It's literally taking money out of your pocket. Uh, but yeah, don't overextend yourself, guys. Do not overextend yourself. If you can qualify for a million dollar home, it doesn't mean that you should go and buy one. Be conservative, guys. Buy a little less than um, you can fully afford because or qualify for because, well, that's how you get your money right. It's not all about getting the biggest, most lavish just because you qualify for it. Keep in mind, there's other line items in your budget. Very important. So, guys, make sure to subscribe. Hit the like button. I'll catch you in the next video.